out speculating, provoking, but he heals you and meets your need because he loves you and because you have one. Have you ever wondered how God really moved? I'll give you a simple synopsis and an outline of how God really moved. First of all, God is a spirit. Greatest revelation in the Bible. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. Therefore, he must move by his spirit. Therefore, he doesn't need trinkets and gadgets and lucky charms and rabbit's feet. There's nothing lucky about a rabbit's foot, or the rabbit would still have it on its foot. You don't need him hanging on a chain around your neck if you got him in your heart. And for you that's got him hanging on the cross in your living room, I've got to get you up to date. He's off the cross. He's out of the tomb. He's back in heaven. In fact, if you want to know where it's really at, he's already sent the Holy Ghost. And now he's standing, waiting. A trumpet is to the lips of an angel who is also waiting for a signal. As soon as he blasts it, the Lord is coming back for saints. That's where it's really at. Now you're caught up with the times. God moves by his Spirit where there is a need, where you are willing for God to meet the need. He'll never force nothing down your throat against your will. You don't want it, you won't get it. Somebody started praying, oh God, don't let that preacher pray for me. Don't let him pray for me. Don't worry, honey. God will answer your prayers. He'll never force nothing on you against your will. Well, you're willing. When you're willing, then he'll say, fear not. Before every miracle Jesus ever began working, he cried these words, fear not. Fear is faith in the devil. But fear God, there's nothing left to fear. And the last thing he said was this, only believe. And as soon as you only believe, then you got it. Let's go through the process again. God is a spirit, moves by his spirit, where there's a need, where you're willing for him to meet the need, where you fear not, and where you only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. And how many do? Get ready, it can happen any time. It can happen while you're sitting on your seat. He sent his word and healed them, cast out spirits by his word, spoke the word through the mouths, the work was done. Why? What says the scripture? The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart, in thy mouth. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Many times I suffer as an evildoer, said Paul, even on the bonds. Needlessly I've been thrown behind bars. But the word is not found. Hear me? You might be bound up tighter than a drum tonight, but God's word is not bound, and it is a loosening agent, and it will set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Oh, praise my God. Well, God bless you. You all may be seated, except Brother J.E. Lowe back there. So good to see him again. I wanted to rise back and testify from Zoffo, Brother Lowe. Yeah. 
God bless Brother Lowe here tonight from Zawfall. Amen. Amen. I just don't always know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm always yielded to uh, be led of the Spirit of the Lord. I feel like getting one more exhortation of a testimony from my brother back here in the blue jacket. The field standing greetings tonight. I don't even know him, but I believe he's got a word for us. I feel it. Well, thank God. I felt that one too. Now, I don't know my brother, but uh, I felt he had a word of encouragement for you folks here tonight. And uh, he didn't say much, but that encouraged me. And there's some of you that got encouraged by it. I could tell it. Hallelujah. Are you happy? I'm going to read your text. If nothing else will encourage you. This will. This is the word of God. As we were coming over from Lake Placid today to Arcadia in the truck, discussing a particular subject, and it so took control of my thoughts that it crowded out everything else for the message of the evening. In Luke chapter 7, verse 36. Luke 7 and 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. I believe the power of God can move in this place so strong tonight that even sinners could come dashing in here and sit at meat and have meat to eat that you know not of, and participate of what God has in store, even though they think there's some Pharisees that's in this place. Hello. Now, the leaven of the Pharisee was hypocrisy. Jesus said. He said the leaven of the Sadducee was unbelief. Hmm? Now, I prayed one time and asked God, what's the worst, a hypocrite or an unbeliever? And he said an unbeliever was worse. Because an unbeliever won't have anything to do with it. They won't go near it. They won't go around it. They'll turn their back upon it. But at least a hypocrite will show up. I mean, he's not what he ought to be, but he comes slinking around and sitting some place in the pew here and there. And maybe someday it'll rub off on him. At least he's in the right environment. Hello. I believe that there are going to be first that's last, and last that's going to be first before this thing's over with. And uh, it's whosoever will that wants to come and eat meat in the house of God tonight. Isn't it right? All right. She was a sinner. She knew that Jesus had at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now in the Pharisee, which had bitten him, saw it. He spake within himself. Isn't that just exactly how most people speak? Just within themselves. I like to speak in God myself. I like to be the spokesman of God. And what speaks from me, I don't want it to come from within me. I want it to come down from above and out and through me. Hello. A lot of people are speaking of themselves and within themselves and of their own understanding. But that doesn't go too far. Now, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Now, of course Jesus knew she was a sinner. Why did he tell the parable a little bit later on here, saying, Simon, I have something to say to thee? He said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, 
The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. That's 10 times as much. 500 is 10 times 50, right? And when they had nothing to pay, that sounds like you and me, he frankly forgave them both. Boy, that does sound like you and me. And then he says, tell me therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon, the Pharisee, answered him and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. Sometimes even the Pharisee can come up with the right answer. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. She's washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head of oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. O God, give us faith tonight to leave this house in peace. Lord, we don't worry just exactly how you have ordained that a man should pray and sins would be forgiven. Because actually, our sins are wiped away by faith. Our bodies are healed by faith. Every miracle that will come tonight will come by faith. Oh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lord Jesus, increase my faith. Help thou now mine unbelief. And oh, help me to only believe. I thank you for answers that are here. Amen. Well, I'm happy. The Pharisee. Then there were the Sadducee. Then there were those that did not want to see. Those who did not want anyone else to see. They're called the four C's. Now the Pharisees were one thing portrayed and another thing in reality. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection or healing or miracles and the power of God. They didn't believe in heaven or hell or life eternal, the soul. Well, they just didn't believe in much anything. Therefore, they are sad, you see. But I believe in all these things. Therefore, I'm glad, you see. And you're listening to a glad, you see, preached tonight, you see. Hallelujah. How many glad, you sees are here with me? For all you glad you see is get glad and say amen. Glory to God. Now I found the biggest hypocrite there ever was. Oh, it's getting awful quiet in here. I didn't mean to say that. This was a man that went down to McDonald's with a hypocrite. The same man went to the Kmart with a hypocrite. He traveled to Fort Myers with a hypocrite. Hmm? He traveled all over the state with him. He went to the hardware, the shoe store, went to the drug store, the grocery store, went everywhere with the hypocrite but the church. The one place in the world that might someday rub off and help that old hypocrite. Say amen. McDonald's is not going to help him except fill his stomach. Take his money. But here in the house of God, if you only come, I promise that something will rub off on you. You'll get a taste and you'll get a dose and it might not last too long, but it'll last longer than it would have if you never showed. Say amen. Is it true? Now someone said, I'm just not going to do it because I'm that man you're talking about, preacher, and the reason I'm not going to do it is because there's this hypocrite in my road. Well, if there's a hypocrite in your road, you must be on the same road the hypocrite's on. That's not what I mean at all, Brother Fred. I mean... There's a hypocrite standing between me and God. Well, if he's standing between you and God, then he's closer to God than you are. If he's standing between you and God, say amen. Now, don't let it hang you up because he'd hung old Simon up that day when he had this dinner engagement for Jesus Christ, 
And when he, Jesus came into the house, he set him at the table, totally ignored and forgot about his duty, his civic duty, his duty as a guest and as a host, and there is certain responsibility that God has placed on every man. If you're saved, you're saved to preach, teach, or witness. You can't expect to keep what you've got if you don't give it away. The reason your experience is stale and dormant and all uh, arid is because, well, you've kept it to yourself. If you give it away, it'll grow, it'll spread, it'll expand. It's self-feeding. It does not flow for you, but it'll flow through you. I used to think you have to store it up like a storage battery. That's not true. You have to empty out, let it flow through you. Storage batteries run down after a while, and some old storage batteries can't hold their charge overnight. Say amen. But if you let the source flow through you, it is a limitless source. Who can exhaust the God of hosts? He that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. I thank God for the flow. As long as you open up, you'll make a good conductor, a good point of contact. You may not get a whole lot for yourself, but you enjoy seeing what God's doing for others. Isn't it true? Say amen. Ye shall surely say unto me, said Jesus, Physician, heal thyself. I never knew Jesus to heal himself, but he healed many others. I remember the time I'd pray for the sick. I was sick and the whole bunch of them put together. I'd go home still sick and every one of them healed. Did you know the scripture says, My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Not my needs, your needs. You want your needs met? I'll have to pray for them. If I want my needs met, my body healed, you're going to have to get up off your haunches and pray for me. It's not God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. God will supply all your needs according to his riches. Is it true? I love his word, don't you? This Pharisee hadn't done his duty, and I think we're going to have to do our duty as a Christian. We're going to have to assume the responsibility that there are souls going to hell, and only you and I have got the message to salvage them, and so that takes away all timidity, all spinelessness, all lukewarmness. You're just going to have to get on the ball and do something. Now, some people are so taken out, a gasp, amazed astonished, astounded, that they forget to do what they're supposed to be doing when Jesus comes to dinner. Hey, he's got a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people to come and dine tonight. I mean, he came to eat. He came to feed. He came to fellowship. The scripture said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, that's not just for sinners. That's also for saints. If any man hear my voice and open the door, he can't open it because the latch is on the inside. You've got to open it. You'll not force nothing down your throat against your will. We've already been through that. If any man hear my voice, oh, you're hearing me tonight. Do you hear what the Spirit would say to the church? Any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, dine with him, and he with me. We will fellowship and feast together. How many wants to fellowship and feast together? Fellowships, two fellows in the same ship? That means you're all in the same boat. I trust you are all paddling in the same direction. Say amen. Are you happy? Well, we cannot forget what we're supposed to be doing now that Jesus has come to dinner. Hey, is he here tonight? Is he in the midst? Has to be. You know how to quote better than I do, but two or three are gathered together is in the midst. The voice of two and three witnesses, every word should be established. If any two or three agree on anything, it will be done. There's power in the twos and threes, and he'll come just for twos and threes. And there's a good multitude here tonight. And now that he's here, he's come for dinner. So if we don't sit back across the table, looking down your nose, twiddling your thumbs, analyzing and scrutinizing and dubiizing and doubting, pouting and do withouting. Hello. Now you do what you want to do. I mean, we've been having such a wonderful meeting around here that everybody got to do what they come to do. The critics got a chance to criticize. The doubters got a chance to doubt. The gossips, they just kept on gossiping. 
Hallelujah. The believers, they got a chance to believe. Amen, corner, got a chance to shout amen. Hallelujah. The sick came to be healed, they got healed. I mean, we're having a wonderful revival around here. Everybody's getting to do what they come to do. You should have no complaints when it's over. Wondering why the preacher Ben's is here, he's still listening for a response. Amen, oh me, or oh my. One of them will fix you. I love him. Praise the Lord. Now here's Simon the Pharisee, scrutinizing and studying Jesus. He didn't even do his duty. Never kissed his face, washed his feet, never anointed his head, which was the least he could do. You know, the Bible said to present your whole body, not reserving five or three or two percent of it off for something else, but your whole body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, or the least that you could do. Now, the least that Simon could have done was do the civic duty of a host of the Orient and the Middle East at that time. Everybody wore sandals and walked all day. They didn't have cars to ride. Their feet were dirty when they came for supper, and they were to have their feet washed. So if you're not willing to wash their feet, don't invite them to supper. Hello. Well, we're finding out what kind of people you want to have hanging around your place. Say so amen. I said, if you're not willing to kiss them or greet them with a kiss, then not invite them. They pray through, then invite them. Say hallelujah. You're not willing to anoint them with oil, anoint their head of oil, then not invite them tonight. Just wait a while. Until you get enough anointing or enough backbone to go ahead and anoint their head, they might be sick. Maybe they've got upset stomach and can't eat supper. Say amen. You know, God's called upon you to do a few things. Not a whole lot, just a few simple things. And if you try, you'll find it's the simplest thing you ever did. Someone said, oh, I couldn't do all that. I'm not called to this and that and the other. Peter was in the prison one day and he thought it was all over. The first church of Jerusalem was praying for him to be delivered from jail. And of course, when the angel came and set him free, they didn't believe their own prayer. He knocked on the door and they said, oh, that's not Peter at all. But you've been praying all night that God bring him out of jail. God's done it. Won't you believe your own prayer? No, won't believe it because that's not Peter. You've seen a ghost, Rhoda. You've seen a spirit. Well, thou art mad, crazy. No, 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 God just answers prayer, that's all. They went to the door and found Peter. They were all amazed. I believe the days of amusing people's over. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amen. And they were so astonished. Now, if God will answer prayer, friend, and the church prays, and don't even believe the thing they're praying for, how much more is God going to answer prayer when you start believing the thing that you ask for? Isn't that true? Oh, Lord, save Johnny. Bye, Lord. Oh, Lord, save Sally. I know I've been praying for 30 years. Why don't you start believing the thing? Why don't you start acting on it? Amen. Now, whatever, don't let Dad go home tonight because we're going to pray for him. We're going to pray for him in a few minutes. So let him take a walk and come back and God will heal him tonight. Someone said amen. Well, give your hand in victory. But i gotta got to finish the Word of God first. But this is what's purchasing your miracle. I mean, you're going to have to have a foundation or you'll be back on your crutches again. Hello. The foundation is the Word of God. Now, get this in your system. And if some don't have the comprehension to understand it, you make up for them. See? You make up for them. And uh, your faith and your attentiveness will also cover for them. Is that right? It's a body ministry. If there's a weak member of the body, another part of the body gets a little stronger to help make up for it so there's no schism in the body. Is that scripture? All right. Watch this. He could have done something, but he didn't. He was flabbergasted by a young man who had more followers in his young life than Abraham did at that time, and he was wondering what made this guy tick until he failed to do his basic duty. Now, just because you are overwhelmed, by the gifts of the Spirit in operation, and some are just eating up the fact that God is healing the sick and performing the miraculous. Don't let that 
sidetrack you and cause you to get off the beam to what God's called you and ordained for you to do. And when it's all over, don't say, well, I can't do that, so I quit. No, you just go ahead and do that because it'll work for you like it'll work for anyone else. God's no respect for person. So he was taken up with the Christ instead of doing what he should be doing. A lot of people are just uh, awestruck, and uh, there's a lot of gospel entertainment these days. There they are, taking up what's happening, and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, like shouting the victory, front of the aisle, praying, fasting, and hands on their neighbor, turning loose their faith, turning loose of their spirit, instead of all scrunching up in a, a tight knot to challenging the preacher. Come on, preacher, let's see you do your stuff. Do whatever you got to do to get me out of this chair. Do whatever you got to do to get out of it. There's some things that God requires you to do. Now, as he watched the clock, like a few folks do every night, Si Jesus noticed that Simon's time was up. Ooh, what you gonna do when your time's up? Huh? Well, one thing for sure, you're going in one direction or the other. How many already knew that? I don't know no middle ground where they can pray you out three inches at a time. Hello? You're hearing me. Of course you know what I said. Praise the Lord. Time's up, Simon. Just then, and when Jesus said, time's up, in from the street, busting down the door, dashing to the living room or the dining room, sliding in at Jesus' feet like a runner going into second base, was the sinner woman off the street, Mary Bethany. And here she fell down and cried all over his feet. And did he get his feet washed? Well, you know, friend, God's going to get the job done. He doesn't really need you. And God don't need me. He don't need any one of us. You think you're going to hamstring God just because you stayed home? Never happened. As the Pharisees stood on the bank, stuck their nose up at John the Baptist's baptism in their pride, John the Baptist looked up and pointed the finger and said, don't you stand on that bank and say in your heart that you've got Abraham to your father. God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He can make the rocks cry out and praise him. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show forth his handiwork. He even makes the wrath of man to praise him. He even uses the devil in spite of himself. Say amen. Oh boy. One little woman was a widow, and she prayed every day for a half a loaf of bread, but she got real brave this day, and she prayed for a whole loaf. God sent me a whole loaf of bread, not a half a loaf like you've been doing. I'm hungry, and the kids is hungry. This then an atheist was walking down the sidewalk and heard her praying through the open window, and he said, I'll have some fun with that lady. He went down to the grocery store and planked down his quarter in those days, bought the loaf of bread, and came back and threw it through the window. And she jumped up and down and cried, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me a loaf of bread. A whole loaf of bread. I didn't set well the atheist, so he walked around the house and pounded on the door and said, Listen, lady. Jesus never gave you that bread. I did. I just went down to the grocery store here and bought it. He said, Uh-uh. Oh, you didn't. Jesus gave me that bread. And he said, oh, beg your pardon, ma'am, but I got that bread for you. Uh-uh, she said, the Lord did. He said, I did. She said, the Lord did. He said, I did. She said, the Lord did. He said, I did. She said, the Lord did. He said, I did. She said, the Lord did. He said, I did. Finally, in exasperation, the lady looked at me in the eye and said, listen, mister, I don't know who you are, but God sent me that loaf of bread even though we had to use the devil to do it. Say amen. I said he will move in spite of anything. And he don't need you and he don't need me. That's why when Simon wouldn't wash his feet, it didn't bother Jesus. He was going to get his washing. And every time he gets it, it's always better. Every time you refuse and rebel and kick up a stumbling block, God always does something better. 
Why, ten times a better washing. Wouldn't you say that uh, tears of repentance was worth a lot more than old stale water out of old Simon's sink? Say hallelujah. I would. Woo-hoo. Glory to God. And don't you think that the hair of her head was a better drying than that old moth-eating towel off of the towel rack in Simon's bathroom? Say amen. I would. And when she kissed him, she did not feel worthy to kiss his face. She kissed his feet, the low-down members of the body that you take for granted every day. But if you lose one foot, you'll know it. You'll find out what you take for granted is all absolutely necessary in the motivation of your life. Hallelujah. Those low feet, the lowest part of the body, she kissed his feet. And I said that was a whole lot better kiss and a greater manifestation of love. And why? Because she was a lot bigger sinner than Simon was. Hmm? Wasn't she was a bigger sinner, she just recognized she had more sin. They got a lot of people that they're full of sin, but they don't recognize too much of it. Well, maybe that, maybe a little bit of that, but basically, I'm a good guy and I'm fine and I'm all right. You are not going to love Jesus very much, and you will never really love Him until you give all to Him. And when you give Him everything and realize He is removed and forgiven and delivered you of everything then you can't help but love him a whole lot because he's done a whole lot for you, but if you won't let him do much for you, then you can't love him too much. That's a law of direct proportion. If you let him do a whole lot for you, you'll walk out of here loving him to beat the band tonight. Say praise the Lord. Is it true? Oh, thank God. And when she anointed him, not his head, she anointed his feet. Um, desirable members of the body uh, that never have any show, never get anointed. And yet she anointed his feet with all that she owned in the precious alabaster box of ointment. His feet anointed. Brother, I believe it was a better anointing. I believe it was a better kiss, better love. I believe it was a greater washing, tears of repentance, greater drying, the hair of her head. Hallelujah. I believe it was greater all around. And as far as love is concerned, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. As far as being anointed, he was the Christ, the anointed one from the foundation of the world. There was no way she could really anoint him. It was just a type. It was just a shadow and a symbol of the anointing that he already possessed. Say thank God. Some people get anointed in their head. Some folks get their anointing stuck in their feet. And thank God his was anointed from his feet on up this particular day. Hallelujah. You get your feet anointed, I better look out. Got running the aisles, I'll have to jump up on a pew. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Hear the washing of repentance. Thank God he was cleansed. In fact, he needed really no baptism, but he was the sinless one. But to set an example for you, he was baptized. Say amen. Thank God for it all. I'm concluding. I don't want to preach long here tonight. And in my conclusion, I want to give you the bottom line. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Not that somebody else is doing it. There's ten people lined up tonight to replace anybody the first day you don't want to have nothing to do with it. And here's the kicker. Any one of the ten can do a ten times better job of it than you can. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Woe is me if I keep not my position. Woe is me if I go off on a tangent and walk the plank and go overboard and go nuts and crazy. Turn my back upon this thing. Brother, I'm going to hang on to what I've got. Hold fast to that which I have. As long as I've got it, nobody can replace me. As long as I keep my place and position in God, I cannot be replaced with a button. Some folks can even be replaced with a button these days. Say amen. Brother, as long as I keep my place in Jesus, he'll never leave me, and he'll never forsake me, and he'll never cast me out. He that come upon to him, he will no wise cast out. He will not take me from a place, but he'll allow me to grow and to climb and to develop. And every day and every year you see me, I'll be just that much deeper in God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. 
But if God needed someone to do my job, he wouldn't have no problem finding somebody. It's the absolute truth. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I'm doing it. The only reason I'm still there and hanging in there is because I plan on holding fast to that which is real. The spider take off hold with her hands and she's in the king's palaces. She don't even have hands, sticks for legs, but somehow she hangs on with nothing left to hang on with and she climbs that slick, slippery wall because she don't play fast and loose with it. And pretty soon, the shortest part of her journey is ahead, not behind her, and she's over the hump. And she's over the wall, and now she's in the palace of the king, and I'm soon going to be in the king's palace, the trumpets fixing the sound. And if it don't happen tonight, I'm still going to come boldly under the throne of grace that I might find grace to help in time of trouble, that I may obtain mercy tonight. I'm in the king's palace already, in their sanctum, holy of holies. Who's going on in there with me? You got the nerve? Hallelujah. Woo, Hallelujah. Yes, Simon, the time is up. You've had your chance. Now someone's coming in that's a ten times worse sinner, but she's going to do a ten times better job of it all. Because when God does much, you love much. Brother, there's no reason why all the folks at First Assembly wouldn't love God if your whole heart, soul, mind, strength, and body after this crusade, because God has flat done much in the meeting this week already. Hallelujah. Put up your hand and thank him. Praise him. Oh, glory to God. I'm praying my first prayer of faith, and it's for souls. I always pray for souls first, because I believe if I can get your insides straightened out, I don't have no trouble with your outsides. That just follows suit and comes along as a byproduct and in passing. And my first prayer has to do with every person tonight that in your soul, you want to ensure your position, shore up, your position in the body of Christ. You might feel like you're dangerously close to being replaced. You don't have to be replaced. I believe that if you were replaced, your replacement could do ten times a better job of it. But if you want to keep your position by becoming tenfold or ten times a better person in God tonight, there's no reason in heaven and earth why you should be replaced. No reason why you should fall by the way, go back into sin, backside, go off across town somewhere, and next month someone else be sitting in your seat in your pew. Say amen. I've seen it. I've gone to many, many churches. I preach almost every night of my life. I've seen the same church. There's some churches I preach in once a year. I have a commitment to do it. And I go back, I see different faces in the pews. I see faces that should be there is not there no more. Hallelujah. Listen, why should you be replaced? Why should you lose your position in Christ? You can keep it just by wanting to and maintaining it and working on it. I've been around the world twice. I've been into the nation of India twice. Every time I've gone there, I've noticed this terrible disease of leprosy. I want to tell you one thing about leprosy before I pray this first prayer. The strange thing. It eats your body away and your limbs drop off one by one. There are people that would come through the prayer lines in India. Their arm was off. Their leg was off. Their ear was off. Slowly, bloodlessly, you could stand. If you had a, one of those time cameras, stand and watch their body literally consume away before your eyes and just disappear into oblivion. Where did it even go? There's no remains, there's no ashes, no dust. Leprosy is the greatest type of sin in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament. It is your iniquities, Isaiah said, that separate you from me, saith God. Hallelujah. Sin as leprosy will eat away at the body. Not just making you old and decrepit before your time, but in the great body of Christ, it causes the members of the body of Christ, who are members in particular, you I am talking about, to fall off and to drop off and to disappear. Maybe you're the finger of the body, maybe you're the toe, but if you let iniquity continue, you're going to drop off from the congregation one by one, 
one by one, one by one. But don't think you've got God over a barrel, because he'll raise up someone else to come in and do ten times better job and sit in your pew, sit in your seat, take your place, and there will be another faith. And what about you who once knew the truth and turned from it? I hate to even think about you. Say amen. But the only thing that can separate you from God or cause you to be removed from your place or your candlestick to be taken away is your sins, your iniquities that separate. And leprosy drops the members of the body off, friends, one for one for one. Don't drop off. Don't fade away. Don't just have a passing fancy and a surge. We've got to endure to the end to be saved. We've got to see the end of a perfect day. I've got to walk the last mile of the way. The last mile is that portion of the road that goes between the pearly gates. I'll never be re really safe, uh, sure and secure, and be able to brag until I get in there and lock the gates behind me. Beware of he that thinks he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Say amen. With fear and trembling, we go on. Uh, trusting God to take care of us and bear us up and carry us through, forgive our sins, and help us to continue on throughout the, the way. So I say tonight, if you have a place in the body of Christ, and how many knows you're saved and you, you have a position in Christ, wave your hand. My prayer, first prayer tonight is for the soul. I don't want no one to replace you. I want you to take your place at Jesus' side. Anyone could and do ten times a better job, for God will not be hung up over your predicament. He'll feel bad, but if you come to him, he'll never cast you away. He has got a replacement, but I don't want to have to see him use it. I want you to keep yours. Everyone that wants to keep your place in God, rise to your feet for the first prayer. Glory to God. Rise for the first prayer. The prayers for the soul. Hold your hands up above your head while we pray. Oh, Jesus, we love you, and we praise you, and we glorify you. Lord, we know this is a short message, but it was the message of the hour, because as we look over the congregation, we find there are people who have responded to the sermon tonight, that they want to hold fast the faith that was once delivered to the saints, earnestly contend for it if they've slipped at all. And oh Lord, tonight, make them steadfast, immovable, root them and ground them and establish them in the great body of Christ, in the very church of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Even tonight, bring in other members and bring in souls and bring in other folk, but don't bring no replacements. God help us to maintain our position. You forgive us much and we love you much. Whoa, we kiss you. We love you. We uh, anoint your head of oil. We anoint your feet with oil. We weep tears upon thy feet. God, we give you this washing because we expect a washing. We expect to be loved. We expect to have an anointing. Anoint us, O oh God, ourselves. For what we do for you, you will do for us. We we'll work us together with Christ. Not only will we yoke together, but your yoke is easy, and your burden is light, and I found it so. Lord, I praise thee, O oh God, for the light of my life, for Jesus who died for my sin in his time. We worship you. We adore thee, O oh God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Oh, blessed be God. Everybody thank God for the establishment of your position in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Don't love a little now. Love a whole lot. Anoint a whole lot. Ah, wash a whole lot. Praise God. Yes, the daily spot remover has been applied to your garment tonight. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. The word has given you a bath tonight. The preaching of the word has given you a clear, bright shower. Thank God you feel clean. Like you've been cleansed, the word of God did it to you. Hallelujah. Praising God for our place in thee, steadfast and immovable. Everyone says, it is, it is, I'm steadfast and immovable. I'm established in God. Decree it, let God bring it to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. If you're happy, say, I'm happy. Do you really love him? Say, I really love him. 
Thank God, thank God. You love him a whole lot now? Then he must have done a whole lot for you doing that prayer. Because you love him more than you did before. <laughs> oh, he had not forgive you no 50 pence tonight. He's forgive all of you. 500 pence. Can't you feel it? Feel it in your bones. Glory to God. Everybody said, I love you, Jesus. I believe the first prayer of faith is a success. You may stay on your feet a few seconds more if you want to and get used to how the preacher feels who stands all night. I'm going to pray some more prayers here, and it's early. There's a woman that's been wanting me to pray for her for, I was, going to, I was trying to count from Sunday night how many nights that was, four nights. All right? And the reason you want me to pray for you is because you need to be healed. Well, lift your hands and let the healing come. I do know that we could pray at this point for her healing, and it would be a revelation, and it would be a miracle. Two things has been revealed. She has wanted to be prayed for for four nights. The other thing is, she is sick, afflicted in body, and wants to be healed. Now, that ought to be revelation. We don't go right into the case in an infinite degree. So we shall. Hallelujah. Now, you may now be seated. You stood long enough to know how it feels. Praise God. God is going to touch you. I'll pray as I'm led. First of all, there is a fullness and a dryness in your throat. Good food is going to leave you. Secondly, something more severe is troubling you. It's through your lower stomach. Break through here. You're worried about this. Yes. Take a step of faith, and I believe you can have surgery tonight right here in the building. You don't have to go to the clinic or the hospital to have your surgery. Want to be restored. Now, my sister, let me explain a little bit more about this to you. The blockage in the digestive tract, which is intestinal, also your bladder is affected. What couples with makes it worse is you strain yourself here to the point where it's almost ruptured on you. God is going to remove it for you now with muscle strain. Plus the intestinal and the bladder area will be restored. Everyone should praise the Lord. There's one more step of faith. You have sat in your seat tonight with a suffering bothering you in your legs. Is this true? Yes. Now you're particularly bothered around the areas of your knees. The knees give you a little fit. Yes. I'm going to give you two new kneecaps. And the circulation of your knees will be restored tonight. And God said it's for you. Now, is that all you want or you want more? No, I want more. I want all I can have. I told you Sunday night that before the week was out, we would turn into a hoggish congregation. You remember us saying that? Now, everything that we've told you about so far is true. Yes. But still, she needs more. Now, let me point out something to you. There are people who say, well, some of that's bound to be right. I've got news for you. It better all be right, or God won't have nothing to do with any of it. You'll hear none of it. You'll not stamp his approval on a lie, because it's the spirit of truth and not the spirit of error. Is that wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. Now, why do we pray for seven, eight, nine, ten things for one person? Because you only get what you pray for. Have you ever got anything that you didn't ask for? Once in a while you might, but don't, you can't take a chance on it. If you want to receive specifically, you must pray specifically. I remember a fellow came to our tent meeting one night, and this meeting was supposed to be a tent meeting, but we couldn't get the permit for the program. Hello. Pray for that guy. And 13 things wrong with him. We prayed for 12. God healed 12, and he still went home with something ailing him. Had to come back the next night to have it prayed for to be totally free. I believe God is a God of specifics. At least you can depend on it if you get specific with it. Now, sister, two with chest here, even down this arm, the left arm, there's a circulation blockage over your heart and left arm. Yes. 
I have to practice in the back and then we'll see. So. So, uh, to leave you go out of you now. Are we are? Now God looks sick with a surgery in the lower abdomen. Everyone said surgery success. God looks the legs at the knees particularly. Oh, where they go? She either broke her neck or God sealed her neck. She either broke her back or God gave her new back. Or whatever else. Amen. Glory to God. Everyone says, thank God it's done. You come to be healed tonight? Well, come on down, get him healed. Hallelujah. You got good faith, I see that. Put up your hand. Lord Jesus, I'll stop his eyes and give him 2020 vision tonight. Good And let him come right. Not for five minutes, not for tonight only, but forever. Eternally and permanently keep him healed. And everyone said, Lord, keep him healed. I got that. Oh, Koriyabra. Rabban Robo Sikpatenindra. I got it is that. Well, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side. I will abide. I love him better every day. Yay. Hey, go away. Amen. Well, one sister's back to earth. Brother, I feel back too. Turn around and look at the family, folks. They're the ones that's waving at us here. They brighten up to your eyes in it. Yes, sir. I can see better. Really can't. Yes, yes. You reckon you're going to keep it? Yes, sir. I know so. Oh, yes. I know so. To be standing on the promises instead of just sitting on the premises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that you did not know of anything else wrong, but I'm feeling now to pray for you again through your chest and your breathing. You've been a I've been smoking a long time, and the Lord, well, I've been alive to the Lord not too long ago, and uh, I got this back in my chest. You know, I breathe through it. For seeing my heart. There's a second thing wrong. You didn't know anything was wrong to start with. But if you stop smoking, I'm all three months ago. That's good. At least that's the start. Hold your hands up. Oh, go away. In the name of Jesus. Take from his very chest the smothering and the disease. And everyone said, there it goes. Oh, go away, that God. Thank God. Everyone says God. I need two to agree. Where's the two? One, two. Oh, that's enough. According to the scripture, it's done. What it really means is the rest of you can't stop it from happening. Oh, look. Brother Green, I see you find any emphysema in your chest. Good. Good, yeah. Two new eyes and two new lungs. You reckon we ought to stop there or give them everything you need? Huh? Everything you need? Well, this is just one thing this time. It's not two like the first two. The trouble's not a little pain will come to the side of you. On this side. Oh, I'm turned around. Okay. There it goes. Thank God it's gone. Everyone can praise the Lord. It's missing. Disappearing. Gone. Hallelujah. Whoa. Thank you. I am speaking a new language. Boy, this sacrifice paying off. Say <laughs> hallelujah. Thank God I'm happy. Oh, Lord. Help yourself, brother. Help yourself. And Jamie down here, she's next. Yes, God's going to heal her tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying this tonight? You're either enjoying it or enjoying it. Which one, which category are you in? You forgot to hear you. Yes, sir. Have we ever met? No, we didn't. 
ever prayed for you? No. If I know anything about you, it'll happen to God. That's right. Raise your antenna, something's going to strike them. You've had a hazy, hazy cloud come over your eyes and your vision. You did. God's going to give you your eyes back tonight. You have pressure things that move down up in your head. It's like a cap over the forepart. Put you in a vice. Oh, let me get the cap. Got it? There goes the cap. You're feeling the Spirit of God already, are you? Now, I want to pray that God tells me. I believe God's speaking to me. You have what is like a stink, dry, tickle, stink going down in your throat here. Oh, Sam will get it. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying this. My work was all over when I got done preaching. This is the Lord's work. Marvelous in our eyes. There's something like an attack that comes to your stomach off and on and comes from to your tongue from both sides. Both sides. God's reliving it. And it will now leave you. Everyone says, thank God it's going. It has to do with your digestive tract. Your digestion is going to leave you. The now. Now let's see if there's any yet. You've had a tightness that you've told nobody about over your heart. Over your heart. God's going to heal your heart. And so you're not going to have a heart attack. The devil told you you was. But you're not going to have one. Glory to God. Hallelujah be to God. I only missed one thing. Something slipped out of your back. Right there. Oh, Luther, give it up. New eyes. In the mighty name of the Savior. 2020, restore to a hit. For a tax on both sides. Oh, glory to God. Everyone said, Blessed be God, it's done. Yes. Jesus' name. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you traveled far. Hallelujah. I did have a bad heart. I know that you said you had, that's past him. <laughs> and now how this is both feel. A bit brighter to you. Yes, they are. Clear and clear. Yes, they are. And this is the work of the Spirit of God. Don't I? I can't believe that. How'd you get here if God didn't create you? Well, my mom and my daddy said they had a baby. God had to create the baby. God had to send the spirit, the soul. Now listen, God wants to create, and that's what you are, not had, but created. Not manufactured in a test tube, but created. Now I guess if he wants to recreate you, he can do it by the same spirit with which he originally created you. Hallelujah. One piece. What? Cataract surgery in the morning. Oh, you sure believe in cutting it close, don't you? Well, don't don't let them do it now. Take something and start reaping. Her eyes has opened up. God's got the cataract from them. Boy, some of you folks that the doctor's laying for, I better hurry up and get my hands on your head. Come down here. Oh, to God. Everyone said, Praise the Lord of hope. That is one thing that's your baby, I'll tell you that. Oh, to God. What? <laughs> All right, we're going to pray for him. God's going to hear him. You believe it, do you? God's going to hear you too. You believe that? Good. You're anemic. Your blood is low. Tired blood. Recognize that? 
In the name of Jesus, we will cut Shabbat. Ooh, hear the sound. Your mama's nerves are so bad. You have allergy that breaks out all over your skin. Huh? That's your nerves doing it. Your nerves are healed. Raka Shabbat. Your low anemic blood is healed. You're still suffering right across there in soreness. The womb is torn and it's dropped. God mends it and places it back in the position. Blessed be God. you the Holy Ghost, don't you? See this baby shield? You couldn't puke him out, but I believe it's all off his stomach and his well. Say hallelujah. Praise God. You know how you can tell whether he's healed? First, by watching the reaction. Second, by checking yourself. If you're so in two years. Huh? No. Mm -hmm. so all over your body. It's gone from your skin. The new blood, you know, is dead. Thank God. Three of us. What does it touch you? Come on. Hallelujah. Well, you need to get on fire for God, don't you? Get your hands up and start getting on fire. And when God takes all your paranoid fears away from you, you'll be able to get on fire. You feel the Holy Ghost, don't you? You've felt the Spirit of God before. I don't know what steps in there and got you kind of lukewarm, but you're getting back where you belong. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to say it. Hallelujah. You also have an agent coming to him. Right? Jesus name, he left. Bob off set her back on fire for God. That would be an example among the young people in this church. An example shalt thou be, and nothing shy nor short of it, says the Lord. Not you know what to do. God praise God. One sister asked me, he said, Brother, baby, I don't understand why I don't speak in tongues like I used to. I said, It's real simple, sister. You got the work all done. Down. We worship thee with a clear mouth. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, you made a speaking tongue. That might still be the overflow. That is the overflow, you know. Stand it, don't sit down, stand it there and praise God a while. Well, then, I see you stayed on. You need God to give you a complete general overhauling. Your eyes are weak, you're going deaf, above all your legs are crippled. Okay, we can pray for that too. Put your hands up. God loses chance, giving two new lungs, and curse this emphysema, which is a form of cancer. Lucid, quotidian rose fire. God, give him a new heart tonight, his heart stands. Oh, Lord, take the cataracts off of his eyes. Jesus' name, Felix. Turn that off. That squeaked him up. Open his deaf ears. In the mighty name of Jesus. What? I can you. Everybody says, thank God for the miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, come on, man. 
Let's walk around Jerusalem just like John. My Lord, my God. Took them hearing aids out of his head and he started hearing. He was so surprised to hear that the hearing aids. He's even more surprised now that it dawns upon him that he's walking, in fact, almost running without his crutches. Hallelujah. Over to God. Oh, Dad, kick them legs one time. Kick your legs there and see how it is. That's loosened up. You feel better. Who has it? Your legs don't hurt you now? Yep, it's hit me good. Make me feel good. Thank God, thank God. You came in here on them crutches. Now look at you. Oh, it's a job. Oh, Lord, listen to his back while he's walking, too. Oh, it's a job. He needed to change position from being back in the corner. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I would say he's going through quite a contortion. And his lungs are being healed. They're just now getting, he's getting used to them. There's a uh, osmosis of change taking place in his chest. Oh, the God. He gets some deep breath. Yes. Deep breath. Thank you. I don't know. Well, I don't know when it was. He walked like that. How long has he been on the stretcher? He came. Yes, I guess he came back too. Pretty good. How long did you walk on stretches? They say. How long? Yeah. Right. Ten years. Ten years? But it's been worse for the past ten years. He's done pretty good. Walk all over the with no crutches. God touched him. He only won't have been on his lungs now for 30 seconds. We're talking about emphysema here. Say amen. You're not going to leave this place without God healed it. I believe it. God's done too much for him already. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Well, here's the cottages over here. And it looks like they're about 10 years old, too. In fact, they about wore out. He got here in the nick of time, so he wouldn't have to buy a new pair. Hallelujah. Thank God. Keep back in the Lord now because your lungs are coming better. Okay. Oh, good God. If you hadn't walked 10 years, it would tax your breathing too. Even if you didn't have emphysema. Matter of fact, you don't have any emphysema. Not now. You're settling right down. 
Hallelujah. Oh, truth, truth. Hallelujah. Are you happy? I believe all things are possible. All things are possible. Amen. Who was I after over here? Let's see. Yes, that's it. Right there. She yeah. was looking the other way when I came here, so I missed it. Okay. You got the God to touch your body. If there's anything wrong, raise up your hands. We won't guess, but we'll look into your case. Hallelujah. You have just a little fullness of your throat, the air of your throat. It has to do with your brain, the throat. You also have ten feet of sore glass, the beach. You need to get sore glass. God's going to open your throat, cut the glass of your throat. Also, the head noise, no deal. Okay. Secondly, you have just a little sensitivity of your eyes, eyes strength. I was going to leave this for you, like a step of faith. Lord your God. I was not severe of you, but the old folks in your family have had blood pressure, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Already you have a, some kind of strange headache like you, wound up in your head. They got a nowhere. And it's, uh, stress and hypertension is what triggers it. God is bringing that down, and your head will not be afflicted with this no more. Everyone said, praise my God. Hallelujah to God. Raise your hand in total victory. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise him, all ye people. Thank God. His merciful kindness is great toward us. The truth of the Lord endureth unto every generation. Oh, it is God. One other thing, in the lower parts of your back, this area, if something feels like it pulls and it draws, as you work through your exercises, if it feels like it's not this blob lady, that's not a word, that's trying to dislocate, to be dislocated. That is going to be shored up. A mild adjustment must be done. Everyone says, praise God for the adjustment. God, take this strain of her eye. Blood pressure and the head condition, God, throat be free. Everyone said it's done. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Right, God set me tonight. Oh, you've been waiting for this every night. You have mild sinus in your head. This is going to dry up brain. Everyone said it's true. Well, you know it. You've had something that pulls in your neck, or the leaders of your neck is out of whack. I was going to heal this. Step out here in the aisle. You've been praying about a particular talent that God wanted you to have to exercise. The talent. And the talent has to do with your voice. But you have said my voice, sometimes I cannot stand the sound of my own voice. Yet the Lord is strengthening the voice and giving you back the highs that you've lost. The strength of the low. Both ends, the high end and the low end. It's going to increase. God will use your voice by talent. Believe it, it'll come with that. Everyone said amen. That's not all. You also have weakness in your back. In your back, it strikes you like a tire or a back ache. There's something very slightly out of alignment. When God straightens it, no more tiredness or back ache. Right? Hallelujah. The final thing I'm praying for is you've been perplexed and concerned and wondering about the condition of the female or the body and wondering what state you're in, what condition you're in. God says they're alive. 
the fact they are at the evolution. There's nothing wrong here. Not the wrong of it this time. And we don't have to worry about what no doctor's going to tell you about it. Hallelujah. Rapasha. Someone said, thank God. Everyone said, it's real. Glory be to God. Well, I'm happy. We bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name that I know. No other. Raise up your hand. God's healing your nerves. You believe it? Then you have a new set. Oh, it's a job. You've also had something bothered your back. God, for the both of you. Thank you, Jesus. Good thing is for you, man. Jesus. Something has got sore. One of the corners of the lower abdomen here, around the area of one ovary. Sometimes I have a burning section, like a mild infection. Now, the east section will be very nice. Thank God. I praise the old God. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank God. There are a few things that sometimes come back to you out of the past and they haunt your memory from the past. I'm not to say anything about this at all, except that your memory will be healed tonight and you will not be tormented anymore, especially in your dreams. In your dreams, even your dreams are going to clear up. Hallelujah. That makes you haunt me now. Your faith. Healed, free, and loose. Jesus name. Oh, glory to God. Everyone, that is real. Oh, thank God it is real. That little girl, right? But can I touch you? Amen. You believe you will? You get this little thing. Right. Okay. Put up your hand. It has to do. The arthritis, but it's, it's not severe, but it runs in the family. It's family. Hereditary family. God's going to lose this for you. Think about walking. You're free from all sickness. It's left. You have Something else. Not, it's not a bad, but it's a bad. It's so unexpected. It's noisy. That is the area. It's a bad. It's a bad. It's a bad. It's a bad. I'm leaving it out because over the past three, first two and a half years now, the next thing is the that is the reveal by the Spirit it always disappeared upon prayer. And I've checked it for two years, two and a half years. I checked it for the five, seven, eight months I've been free to talk about it. God has added this to the ministry. And I always disappeared at the same thing. Jesus' name, God of our credit, condition of the bones is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Second, Jesus, please. Thank you, man. Thank you. Now, if you're doing any song, it says all the time. Huh? Now, listen. Uh, first thing, please, box, box. That was a little story.
Well, where it was there. You don't feel that. It'll never return. It'll never be there either. Oh, hello. The God that did the first two, did the third one too. Well, he knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. Everyone said, praise my God, I'm happy. Wonderful Jesus. Have I prayed for you yet, Grandma? Just stand and I'll pray for you now. Now. Just lift your hand. Now, look at me. You have fluid in your body. Fluid. It's going to start draining from you. Did the doctor give you any pills for that? Well, I just stuck them away. Take a golf pill tonight. Take a step of faith. We will take off. Everyone say this real. Go ahead and worship and thank God. Oh, the God. The swimming that comes in your head. If gone, you have it no more. The busy swimming spell fades. Just forget it in the later afternoon. The later part of the afternoon is when this comes. Have it again. All of us stop on that. Everyone said evening. God is giving you two new ones from heaven's parts out. Here they come. Oh, it's a God. Now I tell you what it is. The revelation is progressive. You got little fine particles of calcium, grain, and sand in your kidneys. So there have been people in your family tree that had stones, kidney stones. Yours isn't that bad. But what you do have is leaving you now. Now, some of the fluid I'm talking about has also built around your heart. Around your heart. And you're going to keep your breathing back. Your smothering in your chest has to do with fluid around your heart. God takes the heart fluid and vein it. Everyone says, Thank God to see you. Jesus has got kidneys new. Glory to God. Blessed be the Lord, you bless me. Thank God. You understand? You're going to be healed. Yeah. First of all, I'm pray for something that is less severe to your way of thinking. You have a skin allergy that affects you. Yeah. And yet there's strength more severe than that. Yeah. Raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you the way I'm led to pray for you. The pray for the skin allergy first. Secondly, you have trouble in your spine. You hear me? In your spine, in your legs. Alright? It's some kind of a muscular problem that you have. And it's settled in to the muscles. You've lost control here. God is going to give you back control. That's the more severe thing. See? You got to take it God's way, not your own. Get that here. Oh, it's a God. Amen to God. Loose his spine and his leg. <laughs> oh, he either broke his back completely or God healed it. Hallelujah. Thank God. Oh, yeah. If you had a victory, he gets up off the operating table, I'm sure something will have happened. Well, here he comes now. Come on down here, brother. Come on down. You feel like you've loosened up in it. Be all right. Well, if it seems to be all right and it feels all right, you can ask more than that. You hit the body of the now. Come to come back. Took God a few days to go to the skin. That part's the healing. Anything that's sad and progressive is healing. Anything that's instant is a miracle. Instantaneous work of God. All right? Like the little brother that we prayed for here last night. Uh, God did a miracle for him by touching his soul, yet he's doing a healing for him by gradually restoring him from Salem cigarettes. Right? Hallelujah. Someone said, praise the Lord. 
if God knows what he's doing, don't you? Oh, glory. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this brother's been wanting to pray for every night. I'm, I'm going to have to pray for him tonight. If I don't, I'll never hear the end of it. Amen. You have been wanting to be prayed for. Of course. All right. First of all, it's small. You're going to receive a healing in your shrine. You want that, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to come to you. Praising my God. Secondly, I might speak about a little ministry that God has started in your life. Be humble with it and to be very sincere with it. It is a teaching ministry, a teaching ministry, and it is on the personal work level, one on one, one on one. God is going to use you on a one on one basis. Hallelujah. And teaching is going to come through this Rasha Kabahatra. Now, I see your. Hmm. You wondered, you didn't have to believe this could really happen or would happen to you of all people, but God's opening up your house. He's opening up your home and your house, and people are going to become to your house. Uh, there are. There is the word of the Lord on it. Uh, get yourself a new coffee pot. I see one that's almost wore out on you. You're going to be using it. When they come, the way to their heart, to their stomach, to pour the coffee, so your wife's asking God, let's see, let's see the cooking here. Hallelujah. When you, they're going to ask you things. They've got things, but questions on the heart. You answer them and teach them on the one-on-one -on -one basis. When you've gone as far as you can, and you've done all you can, the final step is bring the church. Bring them to church, and they'll get the remainder and the rest of it right here in the sanctuary with the body of believers. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. Now, getting back to your healing, your science is opening, and you get tired, sometimes even tired lameness in the muscles of your back. Muscles of your back. I see it here now, and up the shoulder blades. God is going to free your back of this tonight. Glory to God. Rasha Kababahusa. Glory to God. Thank God. There's times when you're under pressure, you do feel a pressure, and the pressure rises to the top of your head. To the top of your head, it feels like the top is going to blow off. God's healing this. It's a form of migraine that you get. God is healing the migraine. Shalabaha Kalamaha. Good. Now you've been praying for special things from God to give. You ask specifically in prayer these words, O oh God, anoint my eyes that I might see and discern the Spirit. I want to be able to discern the Spirit. Pray that. I say the Lord, we see you tonight for the laying on of hands, the gift of discerning of spirits. Hatamo shy, migraine go, fight us open, lame back muscle spasms leave his back. Anoint this one on one teaching ministry and open his house to do the work. The work well done. Thank God it's done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Blessed be the Lord. Everyone said it's so, it's so, it's so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. So the girl may have stand. You've been waiting for this for some time. Lift your hand. First, let's pray for you. God bless you. This is something new. It has to be touched to me. It is. It's come on. It's gone. Hallelujah. Now, you've been worried, tormented in your mind. Fear and nerves has bothered you because of the things you worry about. God has taken that from you, and now you're worried. God is protecting your child. You have a little girl. And this little girl... God is putting an angel with this little girl to 
guide her, protect her, that no harm befall upon her, and nothing shall bother her. She shall not be molested. You understand? Hallelujah. Keep your hands there. Now, God has given you something else tonight, a greater compatibility and understanding and harmony in your home and with your husband. You want that, don't you? Now, don't you worry about him. He's in God's hands, under God's control. He's not going to do anything. You quit fretting over him and don't go nagging and hand-taking him. Hallelujah. You can't handle him like God can handle him. In the name of Jesus, thank God it's done. Woo! Uh-huh. A little girl. And Daddy. Mama. What's the little girl's name? Jessica. I'll tell you. Live in peace and in harmony. Serve the Lord. Jesus name. Everyone says, praise the Lord. Come, sister. God will touch you now. Go with the God. You've been waiting for this. You have four circulation. You got it? Mm-hmm. Now put your hand. It comes like a little numbness. Sometimes a sleeping needle. Like you'll go to sleep. The rub it to wake it up. You feel like you slow down. Get a little sluggish. That's the circulation of, of your blood is moving too slow. Like say your metabolism is slow. Metabolism is down. Now, step forward and try to heal you. Now, you've had some stiffness and aching in the leg. Huh? Mm-hmm. That has to do with your circulation. It's being healed. Your eyes were always strong, but of late they've been getting a little fuzzy on you. I'm going to give you back two new eyes tonight. Are you enjoying this? Hallelujah. I tell you about the poo when it's stirred up. Everybody can dive in and get healed. I'll tell you something more about the, uh, the gift of God. Once it starts to flow, if you stay in the spirit, it'll flow for 17 weeks without stopping. You have to actually stop it, blindfold yourself to cut it off. Hallelujah. Now, again, that bothers you off and on. Be finicky or picky now, but what you eat, you want. 